People ask me all the time if I think the real estate market in Tampa is going to crash. And let's get into some of why I just don't think I will. I'm Sam and thanks for coming by the channel where we make content about what it's like to live and move and invest and all that in Tampa. If that's something you wanna follow, don't forget to subscribe down below. We're also realtors, so yes, I have a bias in all this, but if you do want to buy or sell any real estate in Florida, anywhere in Florida, we'd love to hear from you. But if you're looking in Tampa, we'd love to get on a Zoom call and have some good time to help you just kind of flush everything out. The real estate market in the past few years has been pretty unpredictable. Well, actually, when you lower rates, it makes sense that prices go high. And when people are focused on really specific areas, those prices go even higher. Now, people think that Tampa was a big focus of the pandemic. And it was, you know, in the terms of migration that happened during the pandemic, it was really high. But that's not new to Tampa. That may have been new to some other areas. And some of those areas are in Florida that grew even faster than Tampa, like the Cape Coral, Fort Myers area, like Lakeland and Ocala and Miami and St. Johns County over like by Jacksonville, St. Augustine, that area, St. Johns County specifically because of the schools and this big development called Nocatee. But Tampa was in the mix of all of that. As I started digging into all of this, I realized that Tampa has been growing like this for about 20 years, about 1.7% to like 2.2% per year. And it goes up and down based on what's going on in our country and probably what's going on in the real estate market and probably based on how many storms we're having. But this, this growth in Tampa has been going on for a few decades. We actually helped a lot of people move to Tampa during the pandemic and it did seem focused. What I mean by that is that people were moving to Tampa for similar reasons to each other. So people were you know, trying to get to a red state. They were, you know, hearing what Governor Ron DeSantis was saying and how he was protecting the people and they thought, I want to be around that kind of thing. I want to live in that kind of a state. That sentiment was very, very common. Or people thought prices are going to keep going up, so I might as well go now. That was also pretty common. And then there's another, you know, batch of people that were now permanent remote workers and they thought, eh, where do I want to live? I want to live somewhere kind of tropical, but still kind of a city with an international airport and the beaches. Like it kind of fit that model for a lot of people, not for everyone. But now people look at what's going on in the market and let's just say they're looking on Zillow and they're watching asking prices come down. But asking prices coming down doesn't mean the market has come down. Asking prices are what somebody is hoping to sell their house for. It's not normal for someone to get asking price. That happened a lot during the pandemic. Houses sold for over asking price a lot, but it's common for a house to sell under asking price. And there's often like a metric you look at of how much of a percentage of the asking price did it sell for. And usually that like 92 to 95% is common. So maybe the market is normalizing a little bit and people ask me all the time what I think is going to happen. Let me say right here, this is what I think is going to happen and we can come back to this and say I was wrong or right or somewhere in between. I think the market will keep softening. It'll keep getting easier for buyers. Now the market's always soft in September. The real estate market, the stock market, September is the down month. Just historically. So that's a pretty normal softening. I think it will just get softer and softer until mid-March. In Florida, we don't have crazy seasonal shifts in buyer and seller behavior, but we still do have a typical spring and summer bump when families are relocating while their kids are out from school. And you can relate with that. It's like, it's a good time. You feel like, oh, I'm going to sell my house for the most and the kids will be out of school when we move. Like a lot of people think that way. So I think we'll have this softening until mid-March and then we'll have that typical spring summer bump where it gets a little bit more competitive. You know, houses are selling for 97 to 98% of asking instead of 93% of asking. That kind of a, a shift is kind of what I expect. And there's still houses that go for cash over asking price. That happens all the time. No matter what kind of market you're in, if a house is like perfect in so many ways to a certain amount of people, to a certain clientele, like there was this house in Carrollwood that one of my clients was interested in recently. And it had like 12 foot ceilings, just like these beautiful glass windows in the back. It was remodeled really uniquely and beautifully. And it was like 660 and it was like cash buyers over asking price the first weekend. So there are still houses like that, but not very common at all. 
I'm also thankful that Tampa hasn't seen dramatic growth. There has been seasons in, in Tampa's history where there has been dramatic growth. And even in the early 2000s, in the Brandon Riverview area, there was like 400% growth in one year. And that's hard on the infrastructure of a city. I was actually talking to some people who are moving here from St. John's County over by in between Jacksonville and St. Augustine. And people gravitate to that area because of the schools. The schools are like the best in the state. Their experience with those schools has been very different. People often think that teacher to student ratio is kind of what they want. It was like 17 to one in those schools, but now the area has grown so fast, they can't maintain that ratio anymore. And the schools are a lot, using a lot of portable buildings and things like that. They're actually slated to build like eight more schools in the next 10 years in that county. The, the growth happened maybe a little bit too fast, but all of this has grown a little too fast. In my opinion, when I first started making videos in January of 2021, the median price in the whole area was around 240,000. And that includes condos and all kinds of stuff. So I was making the argument then that it's, it's skewed low because of that. Now the median price is around 400,000 across the, the three primary counties, Pinellas, Hillsboro, and Pasco. 400,000 is really high at this interest rate. Now, if interest rates are you know two and a half percent, the affordability of that changes quite a bit. But one thing I would bring up, and we've seen this kind of thing happen before, and I would just question is the real estate industry too big to fail? A lot of people refinanced or purchased homes in the past few years when rates were so low. Why wouldn't they? It was a really good opportunity and lenders made crazy money because of all this refinancing. Now, the government holds a lot of these mortgages with their, you know, with Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and all those kind of entities. And if this market were to start failing, the government would be holding a lot of that bad debt. I don't think they want to hold bad debt. So I think they will do what is in their power to make sure that prices don't come down too quickly. Of course, I'm biased as a real estate professional, but I also want you to think about the government, whoever's holding the debt is, is biased in making sure that they don't lose money. They are always going to have that interest in mind. I'm curious what you think is going to happen to the market and you know, maybe maybe it isn't too big to fail and it's really going to fail. Different than we've seen. If you, if you hold that opinion, I would love to hear in the comments kind of what you think is going to happen. And I know like, I'm not gonna hold you accountable to your opinions. You can hold me accountable to mine, that's fine. But who knows? I, I really don't know what's going to happen. I would love to hear what you think is going to happen in the comments or on the phone, text, email. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us anytime. Thanks for coming by.